As the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre approaches, Chinese officials are busy doing what they do best. They are scrubbing the internet for any words in reference to the massacre. Authorities have said no event will be taking place in the memory of the ones who died in 1989. On the 4th of June that year, Beijing witnessed student-led protests at the Tiananmen Square. The students had very simple demands. Greater accountability, freedom of the press, and freedom of speech. At the height of the demonstrations, nearly one million people assembled at the square. And how were the innocent protesters dealt with? With assault rifles, tanks, and armed troops. The People's Liberation Army rained down on the demonstrators. The death toll rose to several thousands. This violence aimed at silencing the citizens is now known as the Tiananmen Square Massacre. So are things any different now? Of course, we know the answer to that. Hong Kong, which is known to hold the biggest Tiananmen Remembrance event, draws thousands to hold candlelight vigils, but not anymore. China has stamped out dissent. As for the June 4th incident, the government has stressed on multiple occasions that any public event or personal activity needs to be in compliance with Hong Kong's laws. The government, law enforcement agencies and the police in particular, they would act in accordance with the law in respect of the individual activity and action. As because of the national security law, some critics called it the end of Hong Kong. It made it easier for the authorities to prosecute the protesters. It criminalized secession, which means withdrawing yourself from a federation or a body, punishing an act of subversion where a person undermines the power of the government. It also criminalized terrorism, use of violence or intimidation against the people. The government tweaked the law in such a way that it is close to impossible for the people to express their dissent. Beijing introduced the law saying that Hong Kong needed a legal framework to deal with the challenges to authority or should we say this was a power play to reduce the autonomy. Chinese people of course are in dire need of hope, joy, something that comedy can provide but does the CCP really have a sense of humor at all? The answer is no. Critics say Xi Jinping is exceptionally humorless. He believes that art is an instrument of politics and entertainers should spout the ideologies of the CCP. This ideology led to a comedian's joke being fined $2 million. That must be the most expensive joke ever. Let's tell you about Li Hao Shi. The comedian mocked a military slogan coined by Xi Jinping. Lee said, forge exemplary conduct, fight to win, and compared it to two dogs chasing a squirrel. The government lashed back at this insult, or so-called insult. They handed Lee's talent management company a bill of $2 million. His earnings were seized, an investigation was also launched targeting him. The criminalization of Lee's joke was a serious setback for China's stand-up scene. Comedians are now required to get licenses to perform. Their scripts have to be approved by the officials. The rules tell them to promote social morality and to love the motherland and support the CCP's policies. At the end of the day, humor will remain subjective. Something you find funny might not be funny to another person. But China has silenced dissent, and now it wants to silence art as well. Does the government think it can remove creative thought? Actually, no. Beijing simply requests the artist to practice what it calls correct creative thought. You heard that right. And we all know what China sees as correct and incorrect. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.